Welcome. Welcome to Enigmatica 2 Expert, a mod pack for Minecraft 1.12. The goal of today's episode is leg busting, tracking down sources of leg. So I want to share some of the troubleshooting steps that I did and some of the mods that I used to help me, mainly just one. And hopefully somebody finds it useful. This is not something I'm really experienced in, so if anybody has some tips or suggestions, please let me know. So for starters, the command that I use a lot, even when I'm just playing, I run it all the time. Every time I do something new or I automate something new, especially in an expert pack where there's a lot of machines running, potential sources of lag, I always do a forged TPS like you see in the bottom of the, of the screen there. And for me personally, it's always around 12 and the tick time's always around 20 TPS. I find when my mean tick time gets to above, I don't know, 30 milliseconds, it kind of, you start to notice something's not right. And then especially if your, your mean TPS is not 20, something's wrong. I don't exactly know what that is. It's like a game tick, a game cycle thing, but you need 20. 20 is like 100% for your TPS. Now for what I added, Spark. So I've only ran a few commands here. If I hit tab, you'll see in the bottom of the corner, there's a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of commands. And all I usually do is I run the profiler and then I'll kind of run around my world. I'll run to a couple chunks, stuff that I might think is taking up my CPU time, possibly causing lag, and it's just running right. And then to stop it, you do a dash dash stop and it stops it. And then it generates some links. Um, it generates a link rather of uh, other results and then you can go to the website and actually look at them and I'll show that shortly here but first I want to talk about what I actually did the silly mistake that I did so behind me I have a kill box a kill tower and a kill cage my applied energistic system in the main base here requests certain items and it turns on redstone signals and it asks things to uh, to spawn I ask for a hundred of these as the demo So this system was actually jammed because of a silly mistake that I made weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And nothing could get back into the ender chest to get teleported back to my AE2 system. So my AE2 system never saw the items coming back, so it just kept sending a redstone signal to make these things spawn. And it wasn't just these wither skeletons and these endermen that were spawning. There was withers spawning upstairs here. Luckily, the dragon system is not operational yet. It's still a, a work in progress. But the kill box was spawning all kinds of creatures. If we take a quick look inside the kill box here, I got all these disturbed spawners. I got blazes and blitzes, blizzes, aghast, blue slime. All of these items are used a lot for crafts in this mod pack. And you'll notice I have a colored connector for redstone on each one of these. So when it gets a redstone signal, it turns on. And if we go over here, we see these redstone receivers from RF Tools Control. Basically, my AE2 system back in the base will ask for certain mobs to get turned on, and then it will request them. But if these items don't go back, that system keeps calling for them. And then more and more lag happens, and it's non-stop, and it's quite vicious. As for my mistake here, I have uh, certain tools, these mechanical users, for killing the, uh, the mobs, the wither skeletons and the endermen to get the endermen heads. But uh, these knives in here, when they get damaged, they get teleported into the repairer, they get healed, and they go back in. So all that system works great. I done that like a month ago. What I forgot though was the filtering. Anything that does not have a destination fills up this chest. And I was supposed to check it routinely, update filters as needed, but I forgot. I have since come down here and fixed the filter. So for all this junk and anything else, I will trash stuff. But that was my problem. This chest could not send the stuff back to the base. So it kept asking and creating all kinds of lag. Just to give you an idea here, this is a subnet on my AE2 system that just kind of handles a few mob drops from that kill cage or that kill box. And if like my slime balls get too low or my uh, skulls get too low, it asks for them, but they were never coming back because of the plug. And I guess I could have looked here. That's what the point of this chest was. I was supposed to walk by, 
you know, in my base and have a look, but I kind of forgot about it. And then, of course, this AE2 system is set up that, hey, if my skulls drop below 3,000, send a redstone signal to the transmitter for all the different pieces. And what I think I might have to do is add a, a kill a kill command to actually disable my AE2 system in the event that I do that again, because it was really tough. My world was really laggy, and I thought it was going to crash. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but... This is a server that I'm playing on. Another computer in my house is running a server because I find this pack is too tough to play on one machine. So this spark mod, and I don't know about the forge TPS command, but you might have to be op. But uh, this mod definitely, I believe, has to be installed on a server for it to work. Don't know if it would run on a client. Maybe a client single player game. I don't know. You'd have to check the website. So a little bit off topic here, but this chat detector from Random Things, Beacon. I was thinking I might do a toggle, like I do have for this personal nanobot beacon, that I could type, you know, kill the EAE2 system, and it would turn off, like an emergency panic button, just so my system would stop requesting crafts and being extremely laggy, and then I could turn it back on. So I think I might have to add that as a kill switch. So now for the part that you're probably actually interested in, Spark. This is the mod. You can download um, a version for Minecraft 1.12, and it looks like they have it for the other main versions of Minecraft. Uh, they give you some information here. I haven't read a whole lot of it yet, but I highly recommend checking out these guides, the tick loop and the, sp the spikes. I think if I go to documentation, you'll find it here too. But I highly, highly suggest reading through, checking out the commands. Again, I've only used a few of them. And this guides here is good, finding the cause of leg spikes. You know, take a read through that, the tick loop. Gives you a little bit of information if you don't know. I should probably read it. I just don't uh, don't feel like it. But uh, interesting little mod. But here's the profiler that I ran from that command you would have saw. This is back when my, my server was running really poorly. I ran this. So this is bad. Your sleep, I think the guide, they tell you somewhere in here, it should be like 70%, 7-0. And this is not even at 1% sleep. Like your server should be sleeping and waiting most of the time is my understanding. The fact that it's trying to do a tick 100% of the time is extremely bad. That's when you get the your servers overloaded, spam in the console. So what you can do is kind of click through here and see what's taken up your, your time. And I'm just gonna drill through and look at the uh, the worst offender, the big number. And when you start getting into the Minecraft world, this is when you start seeing all the other mods like Mechanism, IC2. But if you look, these are all pretty okay. They're not taking up too much of my time. But if we keep going to the Minecraft world, and then we go into uh, Entity Item Update. So when I first saw this, I was like, okay, I got items that are causing me issues, but I could not remember where. And looking back, it should have been obvious it was the kill box. But I completely forgot about that because, again, like it was a month ago when I did this and it had been fine. It had been completely fine up until today. So, move entity, I kind of drilled into it a bit. You know, collision, okay, these are probably items floating around. And then once you get here, there's really nothing else to drill into. But uh, I was like, okay, well, it has to be, you know, get entities, some kind of collision. So it turns out it was items, and it's kind of obvious, but hindsight's 2020. If I come back into the world and I type spark activity, it's kind of interesting. You can see the profilers, who ran them. I guess if you're on a server with other people, not just single player, you can see stuff, other commands that I've ran. If we go back to, uh, see, one hour ago, this, this was me troubleshooting. But if we go back to 41 days ago, you can look at, at old... At old things. So this was 41 days ago. This is what you should see. You should see your server sleeping most of the time, 70% of the time or so they say. And if you click, there's nothing to drill into. It's just, it's sleeping, it's waiting. It's not behind. And if we click into here, again, world is doing most of the heavy lifting here, updating entities. Okay, so you know, Ender.io, it's pretty big. It's, it's the biggest mod that's using stuff. If I drill into it, aha, the lights. I had had a thousand of these lights and I thought I removed them. You know what, this is an old uh, 
thing. I did remove them because I didn't like how it was using so much. It's not a big deal, but I, I didn't realize that the Ender IO lights are constantly checking for redstone updates, even if they're always like turned on. But uh, yeah, you drill into here. What else here? Entity living update. So yeah, this is your mobs. Your mobs walking around are causing, or they're not causing lag, but they're they're taking up cycle time, which is not that big of a deal. This is a healthy server that we're looking at, but we can see Animania. I know in the past I've seen people complain about Animania mobs, but for me here, everything looks healthy because again, server is sleeping majority of the time. So I hope somebody found this useful. And if you have any suggestions or tips, please let me know because this is kind of something I don't have too much experience with. I've just been playing around with it. And fortunately for me, I was able to get into my world. I know if you have a server and you cannot get in, you can load up like an MC edit, but I don't know how easy that is to find items or sources of issues because you might it might not be obvious where the items are coming from. Thanks for watching and remember, uh, don't take shortcuts, I guess.